Welcome back, ZerK fans. Banana Lisa, Don, I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, and we have one more match today. It is going to be another 2v2 on Titan. This time it's going to be a match between Ultra Godzilla and Saniac. Ultra Godzilla as Rover, Saniac as Shields, against Steel Blue playing Cloaky and Diplomatic Chaos playing the Rovers. Again, so Rovers on, on the north side of the map and Cloaky versus Shield on the bottom side of the map, or middle side of the map. Nothing's really at the bottom. So Titan, not a map we see a whole lot. It is it is a cool map. It is a really big map. It's a really pretty map. And it's not a map, it's a map that's basically teams only. So I guess I don't see it a lot because I don't cast enough team games. But it's, it's a map that I actually quite like to watch. It looks so pretty and it's like Titan Duel except taller. I like tall. I mean, okay, I like tall because I've been working on depth of field effect for the last two months that makes, that looks better when you're dealing with tall stuff. But, meh. Anyway, the point is that the the map is a nice big map, lots of resources, pretty evenly spread out. We should be seeing a bit of a contest for the center. I mean, it is like Titan Duel. The only big thing is this quarter right here, where we're seeing Dippin' Machado Chaos have a bit of a hard time defending, as we just have Ultra Godzilla come in here, just take everything out, like who cares? Just dart, come in, scout out. And that's the thing with this corridor is that it's kind of easy to come in on if your opponent isn't expecting it. Because there's so many little ways, you, these little ridges you can get around, and you don't have to worry about it too much. Whereas with the center, obviously you can't easily get through there because your opponent's going to be building up, as we're seeing right now. But hey, Ultra Godzilla got the knowledge of the factory, so that will work out nicely. That being said, both sides working on a relatively even pace when it comes to expansion. The western team not expanding as quickly over to the south, I and mean, we do have... Steel Blue expanding fairly quickly down south, but Ultra Godzilla's taking the center, while so is Steel Blue. Diplomatic House is not actually grabbing anything further south in like the quarter-ish fifth line. Like 20% of the map essentially is theirs. And they are gold rank in a well, I guess what is it? Giant in a rank in a match full of super giant players, I think it's the ratings. Basically gold in a match full of platinums. So it's probably a little intimidating in that way. Steel Blue is likely going to be the one really holding that team together more than anything. But I don't know. I haven't seen I haven't seen Diplomat Shadow Chaos play, so they might actually be a really good player. They are expanding pretty effectively though over to the north, so they do have that at least starting to set up. They do have three one of the three metal extractors here. Another three per second metal extractor has been taken in the center by Steel Blue. So the economy for the Western team, it's more reliant on these single heavy metal extractors in the Eastern team. But it is still a very strong economy. Steel Blue, again, continuing to expand over to the south. I like the fact that they're not doing it naked either. A couple of glaives on top of their conjurer. This is what we were talking about in the last game. How it's important to have... Or not the last game, in the Rogue River game. Two games ago. Where we were talking about how it's important to have your raiders or other similar protective units around your workers. Because that means that you can't easily be raided. It just makes it that much harder. Which is a, it's why it's the meta. I mean, you don't have to. It's not as quick, but it really helps. Of course, in this case, it does mean that there is still death, but that required seven glaives. It required four or five, but still, that required a lot of glaives to actually get in and do the damage. At the same time, we see Diplomatic having House having a bit of a hard time getting in here, managing to get rid of... Not much, actually. Getting rid of a dart. Trying to raid out, and again, we're seeing the value of just protecting your constructors. If you keep your constructors safe, you do not lose them. Or it requires a lot more from your opponent to take them than for you to defend. That being said, another perfect example of Machado coming in with the Scorchers, getting rid of one of the ra rovers, get or ma masons rather, getting rid of another mason. Lotus is going to be trying to do some damage, but okay, that's that's the target. Probably not the best idea. I don't generally agree with avoiding destroying constructor. Like, if you can take out a constructor, take out the constructor. If you're going to lose units in the process, that's fine. Because here's the thing. That was the only constructor nearby. If that mason had died, this entire reclaim field would have been another minute or so away from actually being taken. And Diplomat Shadow Chaos is so close in terms of unit speed, they could easily come in here and just follow up before the next mason is able to actually do any reclaim. But because this mason's alive for Ultra Godzilla, Ultra Godzilla can reclaim everything and it's like nothing happened. So yeah, always, always, always take the constructors out if you have the option. If you have the option, if it's between constructors and defenses, take the constructors out the defenses are probably going to be layered in a way that allows that doesn't allow you to take them all out with a small raiding force take out the constructors instead that will be the efficient way around it 
So with that, though, it is going to be the center being held by Steel Blue as Ultra Godzilla comes in. Ultra Godzilla and Jasper both, or sorry, Ultra and the Saniac both, rather, coming in. And should be able to take out the commander. Unfortunately, that is a strike commander, not a recon commander, so it cannot escape. That is Steel Blue losing their commander and losing a lot of what they have in the center. Ultra Godzilla calling for a push, and I totally understand. North side of the map is being defended. This much out of cost has some units able to deal with that, but it's not going to be enough as they aren't going to be able to stop this giant shield ball coming in the center. And there's hardly any defenses either. Unfortunately, Steel Blue focused primarily on getting their economy going. They had some defenses up, but not in the front lines. Their commander, that was their defense. And now they're losing a lot of economy all over. The only upside, again, is that there was a bit more of a supermax push on the side of Steel Blue and Diplomat Shadow Chaos, so they are at least in a reasonably okay position economically. But militarily, it's not great. The Eastern team has won an attrition. Diplomat Shadow Chaos is working on this entire setup. They actually are getting rid of some of the defenses here. This is where you can get rid of defenses. This is, this is not a raiding force. This is an assault force. There is a difference. This is the kind of force that can get rid of defenses quite efficiently. But at the same time, this is also an assault force coming from Saniac. The rogues and... The rogues and thugs. The outlaw also helping out. Unfortunately, the outlaw has not been taken out. That allows for this phantom to be spotted, but it's fine. The outlaw is destroyed. And the Western team is still ahead in economy, while at the same time, Diplomat Shadow over the north, able to stop Ultra Godzilla from taking out their forces. Good use of fencers as well to help get rid of that, or at least just push away the Dominatrix. If they get rid of the Mason, that will be an absolute success, but it doesn't seem like there's a focus on that Mason, which mildly annoys me. At the same time, we do have Saniac once again over to the south, hitting some naked expansions that Steel Blue had set up, trying to just rapidly get their economy going. And defending against even Shadow Chaos over the north. A lot of Raptors are in position, but they aren't being used to help defending us as defensers are being forced to retreat. And Dominator is able to just grab a Scorcher, which, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but again, it does still protect that. Oh, wait. No, a man from the Mason was killed. Okay, what I mentioned earlier, the Mason did go and die. So that is at least the northern side in favor of the western team to some extent. Assuming this Dominatrix does go down, which is a very unsafe assumption. I mean, actually, no! Ooh, nice! The Dominatrix is almost dead. If one shot hits the Dominatrix, it is going to go down. But the question is, what shot will that be? If any. And there's the shot! There's the Ravager taking it out, and that's one fewer Dominatrix that has to be worried about Dippin' Shadow Chaos. But that is not gonna be it. I mean, Dippin' Shadow Chaos has this northern, ex has this, not northern, has the center ridge. That is really important. This is an, literally an uphill battle for Ultra Godzilla to take out the center. But, at the same time, this entire force just got taken out by an imp. By a snitch, rather. No, it is imp. Snitch is the roach. Just got taken out by an imp. So at the very least, there is some respite from that southern assault. But only some. I like the fact that Steel Blue has the phantoms, though, to help prevent any further assaults. But for the lack of their commander, it's really difficult to rebuild. Not stopping them, though. Steel Blue is going over to the south to rebuild all of these metal extractors. And I kind of wish one of these conjurers would be building up defenses while the rest of them build up metal extractors. I think that'd be the most efficient way of getting up a safe expansion set in the south. But that's what phantoms are for. They're, they are taking out the forces that Saniac is trying to send in to actually deal the damage. And it's worth noting, Saniac has only just now gotten to the south. They haven't actually set up for this supermax over to the very, very south, while Deep Machado House has had that for the entire game. And again, that's two... Yeah, that's two for the western team and zero for the eastern team. Unfortunately, the thing about supermax is... They really benefit from overdrive. Now, granted, 3.2 compared to 2 is not a huge difference, or 1.8, rather. It's not a huge difference. It's a difference, but, you know, obviously it's... It could be outdone or outpaced by just numbers. However, it's still important if you do get power infrastructure to actually get in there. And Deep Machado House is building up solar collectors. I don't totally agree. I think wind generators would be more... I mean, I get why you wouldn't, because wind generators are not particularly powerful. But as a way of connecting, I mean, it's not bad. But this game is going pretty quick. Maybe it's a, it'd be a good idea to have a couple of pylons just set up as a way of connecting this super mix. They even just have this mason just build a, build a couple pylons. I think I put pylons. Whatever. Build a couple pylons, have those along here, and that would do the trick. But it may not even matter. Rover Force coming in here over to the south and not a whole lot defending against it. There are a lot, a lot of rogues. Holy crap, there's a lot of rogues. Huge amount of rogues under Iris. But kind of being revealed, unfortunately, the outlaws sort of gave away that there was a force there. Not the size of the force, mind you, but that there was something. And at the same time, Steel Blue coming in with no raiding to stop their glaives as the glaives just wipe out everything. All the outlaws are over here, just out of range. Steel Blue, however, 
they're getting through the forces. They don't even actually worry about the rogues, just avoiding them completely. Raiding around the entire... Oh, that's Steel Blue. Steel Blue Shadow Cow's coming in here. Raiding everything Saniac had built up. All at the same time, Steel Blue is defending masterfully. These glaives are absolute heroes. All three of them decorated for, I think that's four times their cost in destruction. I, the sheer attrition efficiency coming from the Western team leads to a 5,000 medal lead in their army value. Or at least in their attrition. Not sure about army value. I can't easily check because it's going to block the screen. But I think right now is an okay time. But yeah, 5,000 metal lead in army value. Sorry, 3,000 metal lead in army value thanks to 5,000 lead in attrition. Snitch is coming in here. Won't be able to do too much. I mean, they're going to kill off one phantom. That is not... Actually, that is efficient. That is still efficient. That's 480 metal for 760. So still worth it. But not the best possible use of three snitches. Like, by cost, yes, it wasn't the worst way of using snitches. But it wasn't that efficient either. And now, Saniac doesn't have any way of getting to the southern expansion easily. They do have a couple of workers that are set up to take the supermax, but they have no way of really backing that up. If that gets attacked, it's done. And at the same time, over to the north, we do have... We do have some assault here. Ultra Godzilla trying, getting a lot of domination to try to deal with this stuff. A lot of defenses coming in. Defensors, however, are being turned, as is the Stinger, as is the... Just ignore that. As is... The fact that I need to turn the firebox to sound off, because that was not what I wanted to hear. In case you're wondering, that weird sound was a Smash Brothers ladder thing. If you know the answer's ladder for Smash Bros, that yeah, just, that tab is open and just makes that sound sometimes. Anyway, back to the game. We have rogues coming in here, getting destroyed. We have Thunderbirds being the absolute most useful thing for Steel Blue right now. I mean, it's not like they're not useful. They are definitely useful. It's just... For crying out loud, that is a lot of value the Thunderbirds are getting. And the Glaive is coming in here, again, taking everything else out. Oh, no, you, uh, I'm not sure. I think Steel Blue wasn't paying attention there. I just want to say they weren't because, oh, that is painful. I mean, the Snitches are gone. They didn't do much, but damn, that was that that was kind of funny. Like, almost like, no, no, Snitches still, still explode when you kill them. That's how they explode. Even if they're disarmed, they still explode. It doesn't stop the explosion. Or really do anything to affect it. That's not how it works. But that's fine. As it stands, Divna Chattakaus is just wiping everything out with these Ravagers. There's not a whole lot the Eastern team has. I, mean, I like the Rogues. They are not a bad idea. But at the same time, Steel Blue has the Glaives that then counter the Rogues. So overall, there isn't a whole lot going on here that's actually worked out in favor of the Eastern team. The Western team grinding this out. Thanks to the Super Mexes primarily, but also thanks to some really clever unit choices by Steel Blue. Ultra Godzilla doing what they can over to the north of the Dominatrices, but the darts coming in here, that should be able to take them out. Just target the Domies, take those out, focus on those. The Ravagers can't easily take out darts. They don't have splash damage. They don't have any real tools for this. And this is where the darts also shine when you consider that now they're distracting all of these, all of these Dominatrices. And basically putting Ultra Godzilla's commander in a terrible spot as it was too far forward. Unfortunately, these dummies are being a problem. I like the fact that the darts were used, but the darts did not last long enough to make that happen. And the Thunderbird, not able to do much there. Avoiding the Dominatrices more than anything, which I agree with. But not just going to be enough. And, oh, dummies coming around the other side. Dummies capturing dummies. Deep in the Chat of Chaos, deciding to fight, to fight domination with domination and capturing back their own units. I've actually never seen that happen before, to be honest. That's not a thing that happens very often, but I'm glad to see it. Like, silly dominatrix play like that is always fun. Like, dominatrix capturing dominatrix, dominatrix capturing commander, dominatrix capturing factories. I wish I've done, actually. That was fun. Capturing a proxy factory with a dominatrix and then turning it against your opponent is certainly a satisfying way to win. Though, speaking of satisfying ways to win, it looks like this is going to be it. The hard won fight for the Western team, pushing hard. The Eastern team holding out for a comeback, trying to find if there's any way back in here. Diplomatic House did lose the Northern expansion, so they might at least have that, but it doesn't even matter. They lost that Northern Expansion. They lost the Super Mechs. They gained the rest of the map. Steel Blue has grabbed basically everything. The Western team is in an amazing position. Deep in the Chattakaus has loads of Dominatrices. Just get those things repaired, and they'll be solid. Uses against Ultra Godzilla. Ultra Godzilla is still having their own Dommies, but again, the Dominatrix War has kind of been won by Deep in the Chattakaus as long as they put themselves in a good position for that. And Steel Blue. How many rap? Okay, 17. 17 Reavers. Just an army of 17 Reavers right at the front lines. But why not? That's that's a that's a thing. It's a thing you can do in this game. 
is, I mean, okay, that sounds like 17 units, wow! But yeah, actually that's for this weight of weight class of unit is actually a fair amount. Even for a 2v2. And that might still be a bit of a problem, but yeah, split them up, get those, get a bunch of them hit, get a bunch of them hitting the Dalmuse, get the rest of them trying to take out the rest of the forces coming from Saniac. It's not quite over yet for the Eastern team, but it is certainly not looking good. Dami's going down to Overn, and with that, everything's freed up. The Eastern team essentially just has to worry, or the Western team rather, just has to worry a little bit about the Scorch coming in here. And worry about breaking up the Shield Ball, and the Shield Ball goes down. There's not much. The one commander left being Saniacs on the Eastern side. And Steel Blue has a, more than enough Reavers to get rid of that commander, so this should not be a problem going forward. This Reaver is not looking happy. Sorry, not the Reaver, the Commander. The Commander's not going to happen. The Reavers are looking really happy. Commander goes down. The Reavers should be in an okay spot. Getting rid of that factory means Saniac throws in the towel, as does Ultra Godzilla, and the game goes to Steel Blue and Diplomat Shadow House, taking it with a hard won and quite economically well built victory. Just hard won victory in terms of how much the Eastern team had attacked at the beginning and really pushed into the center early on. I just held out. I mean, it was. I guess you could you could also phrase it as it was the Western team grinding against the Eastern team, but there was some good raiding going on with the Eastern team. This entire south side was highly vulnerable and was taken out. Like it wasn't it wasn't nothing. This it was an advantage here. You can see in the graph for metal income that there was a pretty big chunk where the Western team was below the Eastern team. But that was also the point where the Eastern team was losing a lot of their armies, so it didn't quite help them. Sort of got them a bit even, but it didn't really do all the work. So yeah, with that, that is going to be it. So again, do sign up for the tournament. There is a tournament there, and just so yeah, go to the forums. You'll see a you'll see a post for the April 20, 27th 2v2 tournament. Go and sign up there. It's a double elimination tournament. Just get people in for teams. And then go. And it should be fun. So yeah, that'll be next week. But for now, I am going to be signing out. So thank you all for watching. And have a good night, everyone.